Hello, welcome to Franklin County Home Health Agency's Where the Heart Is. I'm Jennifer DeSablo, your host for today's show. Franklin County Home Health Agency is a nonprofit home health care organization that has been serving the 15 cities and towns of Franklin County since 1969. We are happy to bring you this monthly show dedicated to giving you information about our agency's programs and services, as well as helpful tips to help you stay safe and healthy at home. On today's program, we'll be getting an update about the agency's current year and what's new at the agency. I have three guests with me today from Franklin County Home Health. Janet McCarthy is our agency's executive director. Barbara Murphy is our board chair with the board of directors. And Gina Clark, a board member as well. So thank you, Gina, and Barbara, and Janet for being here today. You're welcome. We're happy to be here. Sure. So let's start with, it is September, and this is the time of year that the agency holds its annual meeting. So this is an opportunity for us to talk about what's been happening at the agency in that year, and we share that with our staff and friends and community members. So let's do a little bit of that here today. Um, Janet, can you give us an overview, um, before we get into that, a quick overview of the agency's programs and services and what we do in Franklin County? Sure, I'm happy to do that. So we provide home care, hospice, and other support services to help people stay at home, recover from illness and injury. We provide services throughout all of Franklin County. We have a staff of about 200 employees and we made about 80,000 visits during our last 12 months. Uh, so we've a, we're an organization that touches many, many people in our community uh, to try to you know, really improve the lives of our community. Absolutely. And so as, um, as a nonprofit agency, we rely very heavily on a board of directors to help us out and, and provide some leadership. So Barbara and Gina, there, there are many opportunities in Franklin County to serve on boards, and I'm sure you've both had many <laughs> opportunities. Um, why is it that you serve your time and your talents right now with Franklin County Home Health Agency? Um, I have been on several boards and, and serve on a few others currently, but home health is definitely captured my heart for about the last 15 years. Um, my parents and grandparents all benefited from home health care. I think it's critical within our medical services industry that it survive and I hope that by giving some of my time, being on the board, the small things that I can do that I can help in that process of keeping it current and able to survive in the financial um, experience that all medical care is having right now. Absolutely, thank you. And Gina, how about yourself? Um, it's a chance for me to give back for the services that my family received. Mm -hmm. um, I'm indebted mm -hmm. to the agency for the services they provided. Um, and I'm a, one sibling in the state of Vermont. Everybody else is out of state. Um, it's very, it was extremely helpful, you know, to me and to my family. And it's very comforting to have someone come in and talk to you um, and walk you through what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the hospice was one of the things that we benefited from. But um, I think I just wanted to interject that um, I thought home health was all about aging and, um, and the process of dying. And home health does so much more. Mm -hmm. And serving on the board I'm, I'm just blown away by what it does for our community um, with children and, and for example. Yeah, I was you bring up many good points, um, just your experience alone being right. a, a child uh, with other people not around. It's, it, oh, yeah. You talk about a lot of what our client, many of our it clients was, go through. I was unable to Mm -hmm. to do it. I tried. Sure. Oh, yeah. If I w wasn't for home health, yeah. I wouldn't have. We're there to help. Yes. And that's another thing. I think you bring up a good point that when you serve on a board, you learn, obviously you learn oh. so much more about it. And it's, it's why we're here today also, and why we're here every month to share what home health does. Because as you mentioned, we do a lot of the care for the aging. But Janet, talk about that whole spectrum a little bit. Yeah, yeah well, actually, it's a great segue for me because as I sit here and listen to you talk, yes. I think about what has kept me here and why is, why is yeah. it important for the work that I do. I've been with Franklin County Home Health for many years now and I um, am also my family is also the recipient of some of the services of Franklin County Home Health or a sister VNA throughout the state and and we do provide services um, that touch the lives of our young families whether they're having babies going to childbirth education classes receiving support and education uh, as the new families um, learn how to care for that brand new baby um, you know to working you know the working youth or children with disabilities all the way up to our aging folks who really want to stay in their homes um, as long as possible um, and 
and uh, you know to those who are facing end of life um, regardless of what age very good and so Janet this is the time of year in our annual report we give some updates to our programs and services how we're doing as an agency um, you've mentioned a few that make me think of some of our newer programs can you give us an update on what's happening with some of the agency's newer programs in this past year sure you know it's been a very very busy year I think anybody that works in healthcare these days has to have their running sneakers on for sure um, but you know we're very proud of the implementation of our nurse family partnership program which is a program that helps to support first-time um, pregnant women in our community we're about to celebrate our second our birthday for our first child admitted to the program is, is turning two next month <laughs> and uh, that just doesn't seem possible uh, so we have served quite a number of of individuals and are really seeing some very positive outcomes and um, positive things happening for our young families in our community uh, so that's that's been big. Uh, we not only provide that program in Franklin County, but we also provide it in Lamoille County, mm -hmm. and we have been recently approved to provide that in Grand Isle as well. So that's an expansion of services that you know will help to support our youth in our community. Um, we've been very involved in healthcare reform activities over the last year. We are um, members of the networks for the One Care Vermont Accountable Care Organization and also the Community Health Accountable Care Organization as well. Um, both of these organizations are established to try to improve patient outcomes, reduce the cost of care, and improve patient experiences. And we're very pleased to be part of that network. We think that we can help um, you know, achieve improvements in our health care um, in our local community. Um, but that's that's taken quite quite a lot. You know, we're learning all the time about how to improve the way that we provide care. So um, we've had quite a number of our staff uh, retire this past year, and so we've been very busy uh, recruiting and hiring uh, replacement staff for those. And uh, it takes quite a bit to train uh, individuals to be able to go out and knock on doors and uh, be able to assess patients and provide care independent in, in an independent environment. Mm -hmm. It so, takes special people. And it absolutely takes a special person to do that, and for the, sure. Including yeah. rowing boats to get... <laughs> all, all kinds of things. You know, last winter was very challenging with the ice and snow, and uh, we had very few visits that, that we weren't able to make um, because of the commitment of our staff and uh, management team support to kind of reroute people or uh, make sure that people got where they needed to go. Because mm -hmm. you're right, we, we should remind people we serve all of 15 cities and towns, and that means some back roads and hills and dirt roads, but we make it there, so it's, yeah, we it's sure a big do. accomplishment. It is. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's greater than others. Yeah. Yeah. Dedicated individuals. <laughs> for sure. So that's great, Janet. Thank you for sharing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that reform you were talking about and the impact on the agency, but while we're talking about um, this annual meeting, what are some of the things that you do special there? It's, I know it's a time of recognition. Um, so what do, what do we recognize at the end? Well, meeting? first of all, we recognize our board and mm -hmm. our board leadership. Um, that's always a, uh, a nice time to say thank you to our board of directors who really provide so much uh, time, talent, treasure, wisdom mm -hmm. uh, to making sure that um, our organization runs the way it should. Um, so we, you know, bring on new board members and say farewell and thanks to um, board members who are going off the board. We have three awards that we present at the annual meeting. The first is the Orrin J. Lane Award, which is given to recognize an individual or group in our community that has gone above and beyond to serve our community. Um, and uh, that's named after uh, uh, Reverend Orrin Lane, who was a former uh, spiritual advisor for our hospice program and uh, very important and special to our organization. The second award um, is also named after a former board member, Patricia Dean Make a Difference Award, and that is given to a staff member who um, is recognized for, again, going above and beyond, um, whether it's in the work or in the community. And the third award um, is named uh, the Edward Eaton Award, uh, uh, Make a Difference Award, and uh, Mr. Eaton was a a uh, longtime uh, member of our board of directors who was just very impassioned about volunteering in the community and supporting not only our work, but he also supported care partners and uh, just loved to give back to the community. And so uh, we designate individuals for that award as well. 
Mm -hmm. One of our volunteers. Sure. Yeah, recognition is so important. It's, it's nice to see that you have so many wonderful people to recognize and, and in honor of such great people that many of us recognize and remember. Um, so we recognize staff and community members and, and we have large staff of volunteers. We have our boards who our board members who volunteer and we also have volunteers at the agency. Um, can you tell us about the other volunteers the agency has Yeah, so we have um, quite a contingent of hospice volunteers and um, other, other volunteers that actually just come in to help us in with whatever might need to be. So our hospice volunteers participate in a hospice training. They actually go out and they make visits and provide companionship or take our patients out on rides and just really uh, you know, are an important part of that end of life experience for those uh, for our hospice patients and their families. Um, but we also have a lot of other kinds of things that volunteers participate in. We have our big blue jean ball coming up which is our major fundraiser and uh, we rely on volunteers to help us with that whether it's solicitation of sponsorships or items for our auction or helping with our decorations or setting up or mm -hmm. taking down or putting away or <laughs> well, all kinds of uh, opportunities everyone. and I think last year we had over 50 people just help with that ev that event alone. Um, so lots of opportunities for volunteers and uh, we really appreciate and um, rely on them as uh, vital members of our team. Mm -hmm. So volunteering, go ahead, Barbara. Well, I was just going to say, having been involved with the Blue Jean Ball for a couple of years, as someone who accumulates some of the items for the auction and just has the opportunity to um, request from my community members these donations, I, I love the support that the community is given through that. I have regulars who just know yeah. to present, and I think it's another piece of showing how much our agency mm -hmm. is appreciated and acknowledged as part of the community. Thank you. Yeah, we have a, she's, you're mentioning that you solicit items for our auction at the event. We have a, many beautiful items this year. It's going to be quite an event. Can you just give us, um, viewers who don't know about the Blue Jean Ball, what is the Blue Jean Ball? What does it raise funds for? And what can they expect if you're going to the Blue Jean Ball? Well, one of the things that we do is provide care to those um, individuals in our community who uh, don't have the financial resources to pay for their home health care. So it may be they don't have insurance or, uh, you know, there's substantial co-pays or deductibles or whatever. So we do uh, rely on um, community donations and our fund development. So the Blue Jean Ball is one way that we do that. We raise, um, I think we raised almost $40,000 last year. Um, it's a fun event. It's October 25th, and uh, we hope that people will go online, buy tickets, or give us a call and buy tickets. Uh, and the it's theme a this year? The Blue Jean Ball is going to paradise this year. <laughs> so, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, we've had fun with different themes. Uh, it's a dinner, it's a dancing, music, auction items, some fun, all kinds of fun and games, uh, but just really a nice uh, opportunity for our community to come together to support the work uh, that our organization does. And you have to wear a? You have to wear blue jeans. Blue jeans. <laughs> <All the> better. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make it fun. We call it a casually elegant yes. evening. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so coming to a, an event is one way to help volunteering. Um, what are the ways you did mention town funding and other support? Can you talk more about the support the agency receives financially in our community? Well, the, um, you know, certainly our, our Blue Jean Ball, so our fund, uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, we do receive uh, towns from all, uh, or funds from all of the towns and municipalities in Franklin County. We're very grateful for that through the votership when, uh, during town meeting days, and uh, we hope that our communities will continue to support our work through that. Um, we um, also uh, are the recipient of some money from the United Way, Franklin Grand Isle United Way. They're about ready to hit their kickoff campaign and uh, we uh, as an organization support that. We ask our employees to consider making contributions to the United Way as part of their annual campaign. And lastly, uh, we receive uh, donations and bequests from our community and uh, you know we really appreciate those memorial contributions or gifts given in tribute. Um, and it all comes together um, to, to be a very important part of our revenue stream. Absolutely. One of the things we did um, fairly recently in determining the town amounts that we request is base it on the 2014 census and ask each community town um, to give two dollars per head of that count. And I think that it's important for communities to understand how that number mm -hmm. is assessed and, and I, I like being able to give that image of it's not even, it wouldn't even cover a fancy cup of coffee, basically yeah. what we're asking each person to support 
the, the agency. Absolutely. And we do, you know, you, you have uh, helped us with that before, that we do offer a lot of information to each town specific to how we serve each town. Right. So it's good to see that too. I think it gives a chance for our community to really get a picture of right. what we're doing with their neighbors and loved ones and um, what it'd be like without home health here. So, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the state of home care right now. Um, what's changing? What is the board doing to prepare for changing, for changes? And what our patients and people in our community can expect? Okay. Well, I, you know, I think um, I'd be interested to hear your perspectives. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I think one of the things uh, that our board has tried to do is is really help our organization be positioned for change in the future. Um, so during this last year, I think about um, a significant investment that the board approved in upgrading our information um, technology system. We have, um, our nurses and therapists have used laptops out as they've been making home visits for years. We were one of the first in the state to adopt that technology. And, you know, it was time this spring to uh, upgrade that. And um, as anybody who's gone out to buy a computer lately knows that's, that's not uh, ch cheap or inexpensive. So um, I, you know, I'm very appreciative of the board's um, support and making sure that our staff has the tools uh, and technology to be able to make the visits. That positions us well, I think, for some of the healthcare reform efforts. Um, a lot of the information or the, a lot of the planning that is going on is, is very data driven. Um, and so, you know, we'll be spending the next year really looking at how do we learn about the the care that we provide to patients um, by being able to extract information from the data and, and you know hopefully we'll be able to use technology but you know we uh, I mentioned earlier our members of the accountable care organizations and I think that that's really the the big steam right now in Vermont for how to provide patient care in a different way and uh, so we think home care is part of that solution and part of that accountable care who are the other members involved in that or who are the players so the uh, accountable care organizations networks include um, all of the hospitals in Vermont, um, includes almost all of the primary care uh, practices, physicians in Vermont, many of the specialists, all of the nonprofit home health agencies are part of that uh, network. The community mental health organizations are part of that. Skilled nursing facilities, all all, all of our local nursing homes are are in our in that network. So it's it's really the provider community that is coming together to say how do we provide care in this in a consistent and, and standard way to deliver the outcomes and quality that our community should and expect to receive. That's excellent. Those are groups that we work very closely with as it is. So that's going to be how do you feel that's going to go in the future? Um, you know, if we have such a great system of care in Franklin County, um, you know, I think because we of our geographical presence with the mountains huge on one side, the Canadian border and the lake on the other side. We really have to work together. Uh, you know, there's, we, we, most people that work in Franklin County also live in Franklin County, so, and, and play in Franklin County. If you don't see them at the, at the grocery store, you'll see them out on the soccer field. Sure. So I think it does provide us with opportunities to not only work together professionally, but um, personally as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So Janet, um, can you talk with us a little bit more? I, one thing that came to mind when you mentioned some new programs that we didn't talk about was Start Your Conversation. I just want to bring that up. It's, a, it's something that we like to try to get out in the community and let people know what that program's about. Um, what is Start the Conversation? So we have been um, providing hospice services since um, the early, or the mid-70s, mm -hmm. I guess, as through uh, one of the five demonstration sites in Vermont, one of 23 across the nation. And, you know, hospice provides care to end of life. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes those conversations about what people's wishes are or how do you talk to, the, to a loved one um, after they've learned that their life expectancy is shorter, mm -hmm. is short. Um, and so we worked with our other um, sister home health agencies um, a couple years ago to uh, develop some materials called Start the Conversation. And uh, we've been going out to groups and meeting with individuals to help people learn how to have those conversations and encourage people to think and communicate about what their wishes might be at the end of life. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know our philosophy has always been that death is a part of life and should be embraced and so this is just one um, way that we can enhance um, and make those conversations easier uh, for, for people. Mm -hmm. It's a program that I'm glad you brought up because we do want um, it to get a little more attention than 
some of us have seen. I know that there's diligent action on getting the word out, but it is important that people understand the hospice program has got a time spectrum that makes it of greater value than if it's just that last week or two when someone's at that final point of dying because the intent of hospice is that everyone is able to have that preparation time and the family has time on board with mm -hmm. with the comfort level of being able to acknowledge a good life lived so I, I appreciate Absolutely. that you brought the I program think what, up again. what you're mentioning is sometimes we don't learn about it until it's very close to the end when it's, if we knew a little more about it in planning time we can get more comfortable with the idea. It's never going to be very easy, but I think that's what this program is trying to help people do is have those conversations that we all know can be difficult, but it's going a little further than just saying, did you do your living well, right. as I understand, so that we have um, opportunities to kind of role play and have that discussion with um, your family members or the, or the people who will be involved. So yeah, it would be, um, if people have questions about that program, what do they need to do? Can they, they can call us at 527-7531 and um, We'd be happy to you know, try to provide them with more information. Uh, we've been done presentations for a number of groups throughout the community. They've been very well received, and it's been a great opportunity to just really start the conversation yeah. Yeah. Uh, to help people <laughs> feel more comfortable. The Sometimes piece that yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> the piece that I remember from it when it was presented to me in its um, infancy is that it comes with a pair of tea bags, which I think is a lovely yeah. connection to starting the conversation. Yeah. That make a pot of tea and yeah. sit down, sit down relax, be mm -hmm. comfortable. Sure. Gina, you were going to add? Um, it's, you have to hear things like 10 times yeah. for it to sink in, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, so I just yeah. think that, you know, the earlier you start that conversation, mm -hmm. um, it's important. It's, it's hard enough to go through the process of a family member or, or someone that you really care about passing away. And so if you have all your things set up, it makes it, mm -hmm. so you know and you're and doing the right thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it's, it just kind of, it's really just help. It does improve the quality of the yeah. process. And, yeah, it you know, when it, it does, who knows enough. what, who, you know, can we talk about this, you know, when you get it out and, and have a constructive conversation. It, it really you mix all those siblings together. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know. For better or worse. <laughs> yeah, sure. you know. It's, there, and when it's you a speak, hard time. It's mm -hmm. a hard time. And you speak to the hospice program itself that there is that aftermath of yeah. after the person has passed there is serv there are services offered to the re surviving family members. I benefited myself not just the patient mm -hmm. from the hospice right. and you know one of the things I remember and I don't know if is was the final gifts book mm -hmm. I love that book mm -hmm. yeah she's mentioned that we have a library so with the agency you can that borrow me so much yeah mm -hmm. it's a wonderful book so um, the preparation, being prepared. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think one piece that the board had um, a lot of work on this year that we have brought to fruition is a complete rework of our bylaws. Mm -hmm. Just updating them, there was a bit of a scramble as they'd been updated over the years of them being kind of a mixed match of, of pieces we'd borrowed from places that didn't really fit or serve our intent and, and true action. So that's a piece that I think the board really did implement Great. and provide this year was leadership, especially our, as we like to call them, volunteer lawyer on the board. Yeah. <laughs> Helped yeah. us clean That's up the, job. the verbiage and have that job. be proper. Mm -hmm. so. But what an important job, as you yes. say. Let's, um, going into the future, have the right leadership and, and bylaws there. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. And also, um, Janet does a really good job of having a wide variety of people serving on the board. Um, you try to have different individuals with different strengths and, mm -hmm. and so we look for certain areas when someone's going off to replace. Yeah, yeah you know, I think, uh, you know, the board serves an advisory and provides oversight. So it's really nice to have a wide variety of dimensions. You right. know, people come to the board with experience in, you know, finance or health care or uh, community relations, promotion. Yes, fundraising is really important. Uh, and, and, and familiarity with our services. Um, the state of Vermont requires that 51% of our board have had personal experience of either being cared for themselves or a family member being cared for. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, that consumer voice is really critical. And you try to have representation from each town yes, we on do. the board. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. that's good. And you mentioned consumer voice just made me think, can you talk to us about what we gather from our patients as far as satisfaction goes and how that 
is important to our work of our agency. So as a Medicare certified agency, we're required um, to have a third party administer a patient satisfaction survey um, to our home care patients. And starting in January, um, our hospice families will also receive a patient satisfaction survey that is a standardized um, tool that's going to be used across the entire United States. So it's been very valuable for us. We're able to keep track of how we're doing, what our patients' experience is, and, and learn from those uh, survey tools, and, um, and we'll be doing the same thing with hospice. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, we, we want to hear good or bad. Absolutely. We want to hear feedback yeah. or good, bad, in between. Yeah. <laughs> our patient satisfaction scores continue to be very high. You know, the national average uh, for the highest of patient satisfaction is 84, and uh, our newest report is shows our satisfaction score is 95. So 95 percent of the patients uh, with us are highly satisfied with the care that we've provided, and we're we're proud of that. And um, want to say thanks to our community for those ratings, but I think more importantly, thanks to our staff who really provide the care that makes our patients mm -hmm. have a positive experience. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I was going to say that we do staff appreciation at this meeting, but we moved that to another time of year. But when you were mentioning thanking our staff, I think of that, how we talked about the loyalty of staff. There are some people there. How long is the longest person there? The oh, the longest person uh, that's been at Franklin County right now is um, Margaret Pelcher, who's been with us for 36 years. Uh, she's been doing childbirth education and did some maternal child services and home care throughout the year. So. If you've had a baby in Franklin County in the last 35 years, you probably had Margaret teaching you how to do it. Yeah. So we're very appreciative, but we have many other um, staff members. Uh, we recognized some longevity, uh, years of service back in the, in the springtime. And uh, it's always fun to see, um, you know, the people, how long people have, have been with us. Very, very loyal to our organization, but it's not just the organization. They're very loyal. They love the work that they do, and they're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Patrick is coming back on and he's been very loyal on the that's board. That's right, that's right. Our board members have been very loyal as well, yeah. So a quick recap of some of the things that are coming up at the agency, dates and um, events. Yeah, so we have our annual meeting coming up in September, which is during the airtime, the, the show that the show is going to be airing. Our um, uh, Blue Jean Ball is coming up on October 25th. And uh, in November, we'll celebrate National Home Care and Hospice Month. So we're looking forward to these next three months. Absolutely. So we're coming close to the end of the show. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we close? The petitions? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? There are a couple of communities that we did petition for the community piece of our um, funding. Okay. And I think that's maybe what Gina's referring yeah. to, mm -hmm. that in some, some communities we do it through that process. And we haven't completely determined if that's going to be necessary mm -hmm. in each. But I know in Fairfax last year I did um, take a petition around town mm -hmm. looking for signatures and had great support from the community Wonderful. for making the donations. So yeah. Thank you potentially I'll be doing that again. Yeah. But I don't know if the select board will decide just to enter it as a sure. piece of our town budget Which based on that. Which some towns do, but mm -hmm. some towns... Sure. Well, I just would like to say thank you to our community for the support uh, and also thank you to our board, le board and, our, and its leadership and, um, and very importantly thank you to all of our staff who you know, do a tremendous work uh, day in, day out, 365 days a year, uh, in the middle of the night, snowstorm or whatever. Uh, the, um, you know, their compassion and commitment is phenomenal. Excellent. Thank you, Janet. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the agency's programs and services, please call our agency at 527-7531 or check us out online at www.fchha.org. We appreciate you watching and hope that you will learn more information about Franklin County Home Health. Thank you. Be well.